ABC 15 News at 11 starts now. Making threats against police officers isn't going to solve that problem. It's going to exacerbate it. It's going to make it worse. Now at 11, the city of Milwaukee is bracing itself after prosecutors say they will not file charges against a police officer in the shooting death of a black man. Plus, holiday stress. Is it a foregone conclusion, or can we pass it on like we do Aunt Martha's dreaded homemade fruit cake? And how a hairstylist is making it her business to give the gift of confidence and beauty to senior citizens. A story you will just love coming up a little later. Good morning, I'm Christine Belport. Ashley is off our big story. A prosecutor says he will not file charges against a former Milwaukee police officer in the shooting death of a black man. NBC 15's Kate Pabish explains why. Kate. Christine, just this morning, the Milwaukee County District Attorney announced that Christopher Manny will not face any charges in the death of Dontre Hamilton back in April. He said, quote, Manny's use of force in this incident was justified self-defense, and that defense cannot be reasonably overcome to establish a basis to charge Officer Manny with a crime. Now, Manny says he moved to frisk Hamilton in a downtown park, and Hamilton resisted, then striking the officer with his own baton. Manny then opened fire, hitting Hamilton 14 times. Now, if that number seems a little excessive to you, the DA showed a demonstration this morning using the same type of gun Manny had being fired. It took less than three seconds for those 14 rounds to go out. Hamilton's family and others have staged regular protests over what they saw as a lack of police transparency. They'll be speaking today at noon. The protests have caused the state to call up members of the National Guard to be on standby after more than 70 arrests this weekend. Historical reasons for concern, but I cannot be swayed by passion or prejudgment when making these decisions, regardless of how popular or how unpopular that decision is. Now, this shooting happened just one week after Governor Scott Walker signed a bill into law that requires an outside agency to investigate all officer involved shootings. So, this case was not investigated by the Milwaukee PD. It was investigated by the state's Department of Criminal Investigations. There were also independent investigations conducted by a local use of force expert and a national use of force expert. All came to the same conclusion not to file charges. Coming up in our NBC 15 evening newscast, we'll speak with leaders here in Madison who are working to make sure peace is kept. Kate, thank you. And in a related story, after the murders of two NYPD officers this weekend, some police are blaming New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio. The officers turned their backs on the mayor as he was about to address the media on the deaths of the officers. But New York City Police Commissioner Bill Bratton downplayed the rift between the officers and the mayor, saying the mayor has lost the faith of just some of the officers. We're in a, uh, a, a change moment, I think is the term, here in the United States. And the idea is to take out of this crisis, find opportunity to move it forward. And I, I think that can happen. The commissioner also said the last time he saw this kind of tension between the police and the city government was back in the 1970s. The two officers were gunned down in their police cruiser by a man who later killed himself in a nearby subway station, posting on Twitter that he wanted people to shoot officers in retaliation for the murders of two unarmed black men. This is your weather authority forecast. More clouds out there, and soon there will be some rain. Rain moving in from the south now, and that will head on into Wisconsin this afternoon. Rain will be likely a 37-degree high temperature. East winds 10 to 15. It will be mild enough tonight that all precip will remain in the form of rain, and same goes for tomorrow. And I do look for some rain during both of those periods, especially tonight. Uh, no snow, no significant snowfall expected between now and Christmas. We could get a flurry on the very tail end of this, but no accumulation is expected. So it doesn't look like we'll have a white Christmas, but it does look like we will have a mild one, and I'll have that forecast for you coming up. Thank you, Charlie. Happening today, if you witness a fire in a certain Janesville neighborhood, do not be alarmed. The Janesville Fire Department is conducting live fire training exercises. 
They're taking place on the 300 block of Milton Avenue. Crews want you to know these are controlled burns and you do not need to call 911. They also warn there may be traffic delays while a burn is in progress. Around the nation now, more fast-moving developments in the cyber attack against Sony Pictures officially blamed on North Korea. President Obama is signaling the country may be added to the list of nations that sponsor terrorism, even though North Korea denies it's behind the hack. Meantime, Sony may release the movie that triggered the hack after all. NBC's Hallie Jackson reports. Hello, North Korea! As Sony execs plan their next move with the controversial film The Interview, U.S. officials are grappling with how to respond to the cyber attack. No, I don't think it was an act of war. I think it was an act of cyber vandalism that was very costly, very expensive. We take it very seriously. The president's critics say that does not go far enough. It's more than vandalism. It's a new form of warfare. Now, North Korea is threatening its own response, accusing the U.S. government of being deeply involved with making the interview. Sony's comedy featuring a plot to kill North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. I think we've got to recognize that this is not a Sony security problem. This is a national security problem. And the government has got to lead. The White House is asking China, North Korea's biggest trading partner, for its cooperation. And President Obama has promised a proportional response to the hack. This attack should be taken seriously as an attack. And that would mean that the country would be added to the state-sponsored terrorist list. But amid calls for a serious response also came jokes. Comedian Mike Myers making a dramatic entrance on Saturday Night Live this weekend, playing Dr. Evil and mocking the cyber attack. But why pick on Sony? They haven't had a hit since the Walkman. <laughs> but for Sony, it's no laughing matter. Industry analysts say the hack may cost Sony upwards of $100 million after the studio yanked the film before its planned Christmas Day release, since movie theaters refused to show it. I think they made a mistake. But Sony insists it's not giving up without a fight. We have not caved. We have not given in. Still, the biggest movie in the country remains one almost nobody has seen. And that was Hallie Jackson reporting. Now the White House says it's pleased to hear Sony is considering releasing the movie. And that follows many in Hollywood who say audiences should be able to decide for themselves if they want to see the movie, the interview, or not. A Washington, D.C. area home flooded today after a water main broke, sending water into the air. The water began flooding the home early this morning. A portion of the road was shut down in both directions as crews worked to repair the ruptured water main. No word yet on the cause, but firefighters had used the hydrant to battle an earlier two-alarm fire. In your health, it is the most wonderful and demanding time of the year. Health experts have some ideas on how to avoid that holiday stress. The key is not to strive for perfection. Unrealistic expectations often end in disappointment, sadness, and anxiety. And for those celebrating alone, psychiatrists recommend enjoying some non-traditional holiday activities or giving part of your day to help others. And for those facing a lot of family togetherness, try to avoid controversial subjects and conversations. Keep things simple and do not focus on gift giving. Well, a volunteer hairstylist provides services to seniors to boost their confidence and make them feel beautiful inside and out. NBC's Kelsey Perkins has the story. This is the best job in the world, and I'm just glad that I get to be a part of it. For four years, Christy Claycomb has been doing hair for seniors in the Sunrise Creek Living Center, but she does much more than styling their curly tendrils. She gives them confidence at a time when they might not have much. When they leave, that you can tell that they have, you know, a sense of pride and they look good. They hold their heads up higher. Many of Claycomb's clients suffer from dementia. She shampoos and styles those who can't do it themselves or can't easily get to a beauty shop. She's a dear, dear, wonderful lady, and, and I think... She's very patient with everybody. Her patience has come from her experience with the disease. Her dad passed away from Alzheimer's and lived in the memory care center at the facility while she worked in the beauty shop upstairs. He means everything to me, and um, it was really 
it meant a lot that I was just here and I could run down on my lunches. Living Center Director Tony Lukwinko says that his residents stress to the nines every day. Being able to take care of themselves adds value to their quality of life. They really take a lot of pride in their appearance and, and having their independence. He says going to Christie makes their smiles a little bigger and their heads a little higher each week. When, when we know they get their hair done, we're going around complimenting them, of course, and uh, it just adds to it. They just feel really good about themselves. Christy is loved by many at the Living Center who pop in and out all day to say hi. Her beauty shop brings a little bit of sunshine to Sunrise Creek. I'd rather have her do it because I enjoy She has nice, strong hands. That's good, and that was Kelsey Perkins reporting.